She caught the pink one. I knew it. Pocahontas knew it. Grandmother Willow told me that. That's right. Here's you get any prize you want. Yeah. Pick a prize. Yeah. One, okay? One. Okay. What's your name? You can finish now. the trees, and the wind. 
one day Pocahontas visited, do we know who that is? Uh, who is it? Grandmother Willow, a wise old tree spirit. My father wants me to marry the warrior Kukum, Pocahontas told her. But he is so serious, and lately I've been dreaming a strange way? dream of a spinning arrow. Grandmother Willow knew there was great wisdom to be found in dreams. It's pulling you down your path, she told Pocahontas. Well, how do I find my path, Pocahontas wondered. If you listen with your heart, you will understand, Grandmother Willow replied. The spirits that live in all things will guide you. So Pocahontas listened to the wind and climbed Grandmother Willow's strong branches. Off in the distance, she saw some very strange clouds. But they weren't clouds. They were white sails of a ship, bringing men from England to the New World in search of gold. As soon as the boat touched the shore, a man called John Smith, who's that? I got it! That's right. John Smith climbed a tree to see the wild land, and he came face to face with Pocahontas' friend, who's that? Miko. Miko. What is Miko? What kind of animal? What is it? A raccoon. That's right. Yeah. That's your favorite? Well, you're a strange-looking fellow. So he hid and watched. Soon Pocahontas came into view. She was the most beautiful young woman he had ever seen. But when she saw him, Pocahontas ran to her canoe, quick as a deer. Smith ran after her. Don't go, please. Whoa. I won't hurt you, Smith called after her. But Pocahontas could not understand the words the strange man spoke. But the sound of Grandmother Willow's words echoed in her mind. We'll fight these dangerous strangers together, Powhatan told his people. But even then, Pocahontas was talking to her friend John Smith. Miko was searching Smith's pouch for some treats, but grabbed his compass instead. What is that? Pocahontas asked as Miko ran off. It tells you how to find your way when you are lost, Smith told her. Miko can keep it. I will buy another compass in London. London? Is that your village? Pocahontas asked. Smith tried to explain to her about cities and how his people would show hers how to build the right kind of houses and roads. Pocahontas knew the woods around them were far more beautiful than any city could ever be. So she showed John Smith her world and told him how she and her people were connected to it. Pocahontas even took Smith to Grandmother Willow's glade. Smith was stunned. One look at this place and the men will forget all about digging for gold. What is gold? Pocahontas asked. Smith showed her a gold coin. There is nothing like that around here, Pocahontas said, shaking her head. But Kukum charged at Smith. Frightened, Thomas fired his musket and Kukum fell. Thomas, run, Smith cried. As Thomas fled, warriors swarmed into the glade. They captured John Smith and took him back to the village. At sunrise, this man will die, Chief Powhatan told the people. Pocahontas went to Grandmother Willow. I thought my dream led me to John Smith, she cried, but now he's going to die. I feel so lost. Just then, Mika dropped a round metal object into Pocahontas' hands. Through her tears, Pocahontas looked at John Smith's compass. The needle moved back and forth. The spinning arrow, she whispered. Grandmother Willow smiled. The arrow from your dream, it shows you your path. Let the spirits of the earth guide you. Pocahontas ran like the wind. At dawn, she reached the cliff and her father was about to carry out the sentence on John Smith. Pocahontas threw herself across Smith's body. If you kill him, you will have to kill me too, she cried. Look around you. This is where the path of hatred has brought us. Two armies stood ready to fight. The settlers clutched their muskets. The warriors pulled their bowstrings taut. I love him, Pocahontas declared. This is the path I choose, Father. What will yours be? Chief Powhatan dropped his weapon. If there is to be more killing, it will not start with me. The settlers lowered their guns. Now is our chance, Ratcliffe commanded. Fire! But none of the settlers would shoot. So Ratcliffe grabbed a musket and aimed at Chief Powhatan. No, John Smith cried as he leaped between the bullet and its mark. Well, Smith had to return to England to get treatment for his wound. Ratcliffe was returning, too, in chains. 
Pocahontas did not go with her friend. I am needed here, she told him. Wherever I am, I'll always be with you, Smith said to her as he left. Pocahontas turned her face up to the sky. She did not cry because she knew they would always be together in their hearts. The end. Good story, huh, Alexis? Yeah, that was good. Well, you guys listened so wonderfully to that story, but I have a special surprise for all of you. Have any of you ever had ace painting or erasable tattoos? Yeah. You haven't had that before? I tell you what, we're going to go on the patio to do that so as not to mess up the carpet. So is that okay, Mom? Yeah, that's great. All right, everybody. So what we're going to do is line up. Yeah. And also, I'll bring some good patients. Finish with the patient. We're going to bring some jump ropes and stuff. We're going to jump ropes. Okay. Who would like to be next? Have a seat to see. Okay. 
You guys, can you just take one little step back? Just a little step back. There you, you go. You guys, step oh. back. Here, I'll do this for a little bit. I need my dog. Hey, can you give me a favor? Can you get me some water on the sponge? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Blue heart. Can I have a heart? A blue heart. Okay, sure. Okay. I'm going to take a picture. I'm asleep. Put that on your face. That's it. How, how, how much later did you get here? How many years after? Mix it around, huh? Let me see that. Okay. 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 Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Is it Pocahontas or Beauty and the Beast? Uh, or Aladdin? Yeah. Pocahontas? Good answer. Oh, <laughs> right. Good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your favorite character is Nico? Nico. Yeah. Yeah, that came out real, real nice. Perfect. Did you get your tattoo yet? Okay. You're going to get a fish, huh? All right. What fish are you coming up? Can I try a chest? Okay. Listen. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's Oh, that's right. That's exactly right. How many does that equal? Seven? Yeah. Yeah. Is that you, Scott? You playing tic-tac-toe? Yeah. I'm going to do yellow, too. I think it would be. But it's really cool, yeah. You got that? Yeah. He's getting an Indian. He's getting a yellow? Indian war paint. Oh. <laughs> they got a tiger. They got a lion. They got a lion one. I can maybe lion. do a star. They got a lion one. Lion. 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 lion one. That looks cool. Do you want a lion on Alex? Can you want to touch him? They got your grandpa right here. They got yeah. an Indian. They got yeah. a lion. Grandpa. Grandpa, you got the video you. camera going, don't you? Yep. Mm. Do you have to do basketball? You got to get it on camera. I probably could figure it out. I got a seal. A seal. You want this hand? Dang. That's the one you want? Um, or butterflies. Who's your brother? Oh, in, in, in the hula hoop, you, you take a step back, throw in the center of the hula hoop, and each time take a step back. That's called, that's Indian darts. How come? Oh, bro, butterfly? Okay, here we go. Oh, like more paint, Mom? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He looks cool. And he's helped Pocahontas out a lot today. I bet he has. Jeez. Derek, 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 Derek. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was a little early on that one. Are you having fun, Jess? Yeah. Hey, Derek. Do you want to go again? Derek. Derek? Yeah. Yeah. Derek, look up. <laughs> his grandpa always got that video camera in his hand here. Oh, 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 <laughs> I'll hold this one for a long time, make sure I get it right. <laughs> How do you do this one? That's a, a big tic-tac-toe. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. it's an outdoor big tic-tac-toe. Hey, Alexis, do you have naturally yeah, curly hair? It's beautiful. I think it's ready now. Yeah, that's a good one. Hey, Chad. Chad. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay, Chaz. Now that your big brother went, you're ready to go, huh? What do you want on your face, Chaz? You want a balloon, a smiley face? I don't know if Chaz is gonna let Pocahontas face paint him. Hey, Chaz. Chaz, you wanna let Pocahontas draw a smiley face on him? Okay. I'll make a yellow to match your shirt. Okay. I need to grow together. Yeah, it's a male one. Arms around. When's your birthday, Chaz? Coming up? Yeah. Huh? Your birthday's today? No, it's Alexis's birthday. Alright. 
Yeah. Oh, I give you a sunshine on your face. A great big yellow sun. Here comes the sun. Okay, you're ready. All right. Oh, yeah. Hold it for a few minutes. When we finish, it's going to be a great big lion. What does the lion say? Rawr, right? Rawr. <laughs> the lion's at the circus, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see it. How about you? Oh, we didn't peel the paper off, Chaz. we got to do it again. Pocahontas forgot the paper. Oh, we got to get another lion. I hope I have one. Do you have a lion, Derek? Do you have the pile of tattoos? Hey, look, look. Isn't that oh, cool? nice? It's a motorcycle. Oh, boy. That came out nice. Okay, who's, put your hand up if you want to be next. You've been waiting. You're dying to go. Can you make me a you want, basketball? You want a basketball. That's why you're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you look great. Okay. Jeez. I want to take one more. Okay, just, it you know. Case we not. Yeah. Okay, beautiful, right. very colorful. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to get a little bit organized here, and then I want everyone to meet me in the living room. We're going to circle up, and we're going to sing a song to Alexis. Okay. Okay, so let me just... Mm -hmm. um, Pocahontas oh, is not like to leave a mess where she goes. So she tries to pick up a little bit. Pocahontas, like a drink? Yes, can I have a glass of water? It would be great. Thank you. Diet Coke, if you have it. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay, what one you want to try? I'm going to make another circle, okay? It should be seven cakes in there. Are there seven cakes? Why don't you take something around? Did you take a prize? Well, it does work. Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! Who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? Know that? M-I-C-K-E-Y.
Curly Brown. That's a little bad boy pony. <laughs> he likes to make all the mischief at the farm. Beautiful. 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 Beautiful
Who needs cake? Who needs cake? Oh, 
Thank you. He said you like that. It's his own thing. Oh, oh no. Not your old kid. Oh. Baby doll. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah.
This is your kid? That's my kid. What are you doing for That's my kid. Oh, it looks just like it. That's my face. Yes, Cassie Joe, looks just like it. Here we go. Three, four, one.
they looked very good. For their age, too. Yeah.
Jessica's been here every meeting these first four weeks, too. So she's going to get Girl Scout ways because she's learned about Girl Scouting. And also went to the Bag of Edge to earn more body. Rebecca, twin sister of Stephanie, is also getting Girl Scout ways for learning all about Girl Scout ways. Yes and no. Not yet, but I will. Cake that they made. What a nice cake. Something over here. I know. I had it once. Are you ready? No, I couldn't. Okay. I had it once. Yeah, keep it Heather, get your sister a plate. Give Sammy one. We'll sit here. Yeah. 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 Bobby. Bobby. 
Okay. Come on, defense! Come on, defense! Why 
go get him, Benny! Good job, Benny! Good job! You know, he looked back over his shoulder and I thought he forgot to get him. Come on, hustle it up! Let's go, Benny! 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 Let's go, Benny!
All right, listen up, fellas. Be on time Monday night. We've got a lot of work we got to get done. A lot of work before, before we play Atlanta. And don't go anywhere. When we release you, don't go anywhere. Miss Lisa, Miss Lisa's got something to say. Hey, guys, good job today. Real good job. I'll see you Monday. A lot of work Monday. A lot of work Monday. Guys, good job. Congratulations. Well, you take your helmets off and drink your juice. You guys are ready for that. You guys did really well. Come on, quiet down. Stay focused. Let's go. We got a big game next week. Pay attention and practice. We got a lot we got to get done. Hey, guys, I need to be quiet because I need to talk to your parents. Quiet. Parents, next weekend is going to be homecoming, and we're playing on. Friday night, but homecoming is all day Saturday in the field. Everybody else is at home. The <coughs> teams are playing on Friday night, the 75 B team, and everybody else plays at home. The last game is going to be over about 4 o'clock. And this year they've decided to have homecoming catered. So at 4 o'clock they close down the uh, back parking lot where we all park. And we're going to set up tables and they're going to have Adam's Rib cater it. It's going to be. Um, but it's going to be $6.50 for an adult and kids under 10, and everyone here has children under 10. Everybody's kids are under 10, right? Right. $3.40. I need to collect the money. I have to turn it in Wednesday, so I'm going to send out a notice Monday, and I need everybody to turn their money into me on Monday and Tuesday so that I can get it in Wednesday. We want everybody to it's a great time. We will have a DJ there spinning records and everybody dances in the parking lot. And um, we'll have tug of war and a bunch of other activities. It is a great, fun family day. Everybody wear Dewey colors. All your moms wear your little pins. Show support. And my dad. And my dad. And my dad. And my dad. Friday night after our game, we um, will decorate the field Friday night so that when all the teams uh, come in Saturday, that field is going to be decorated. We have a big section of bins that we're going to decorate. We'll put posters up in the I need you guys to bring old newspapers. We'll sprinkle them up and stuff the bins and then we'll spray paint it. We'll put balloons everywhere. So everybody after our, after our game on Friday night, plan to stick around and help decorate the field. Because the thing I'll give our field is we will do the whole entire fence from the very end all the way around. the whole place. Okay. Good game, Chris. You know, many as you have to bring. What? Um, if you write a check, the check's fine. Make it out to BBGC, Bowie Bowie's and Bowie's Club. Okay? Good deal. I'll be right there. Oh. How'd you like the game? Mike, good, good, good Excellent playing. Plays. How about you? Good playing, Mike. I got you on film, Mike, every time. Mike, where are you? I followed you all the way through, buddy. Good you had playing, a good game, guys. Mike. Very good, there's Mike. There's Brittany with her lips, and there's Grandma. <laughs> we won. Lips. You won. What Grandma was the score? Um, 34 to nothing. 34 okay. nothing. Wow. Good game. Good game, Which Mike. Mike, I'll tell Grandpa where, where, where this We have 34, and they had nothing. We got 34, and they had nothing. Mike, what was the score, Mike? 34 to nothing. 34 to nothing, huh? Good show. Right here. In his hand. Now, to those people who say, and there are some people now saying, that this decision was based on race, can you set uh, the record straight on that? No comment. Was it decided on the basis of race? No comment. Is there something you would like to say about the jury deliberations, about their fairness, or, or anything that you felt about the deliberations? No comment at this time. And that uh, someone had quoted you earlier as saying that Keep in mind that jurors are human beings. Did you say that sometime this afternoon? No, I didn't. When you came home, you said that, uh, I thought I heard you say, well, I, when the verdict was in, I, I kind of wondered what the reaction would be, but now that I'm home, I know I made the right verdict. Did you say that? No, I didn't. Okay. I just said I'm happy to be home with my family. Ms. Moran, thank you very much for being with us. Sure. The Simpson case consumed more than a year, and its images have been burned into our nation's memory. 
They are images that bound us together and at times tore us apart, but they are images many of us will never forget. We promise to do all in our power to ensure that Nicole did not die. Brian was a good human being. He cared about it. Oh, 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 oh. Have you been told you're under arrest, O.J.? O.J. Simpson is believed to be in the white Bronco. He's still alive, but he's got a gun to Don't feel there. sorry for me. Please think of the real O.J. Wherever you are. Tonight, O.J. Simpson is in jail on charges he killed the mother of his children and her friend. Why would uh, Renshaw James Simpson, the man who seemingly had it all, they in his don't time? No. Mr. Farner, I cross the street. He took, talk about the evidence you've uncovered in that? We observed a female white and a black dress. The evidence in this case we believe will show. That O.J. Simpson is an innocent man. We will show you the other side Wrong. of the smiling face you saw. Well, this defendant had for Nicole Brown wasn't love. It was obsession. Can you get someone over here now to 325 Gretna Green? Figure out that. Throw against the wall. We kind of jokingly just said, you know, to be on a ship. This one called me ship. Yeah. I've, I've had some dreams of killing her. You drink a lot, don't you? I uh, used to. It's going to be a long trial. In the event, uh, you should need to take a, an unscheduled comfort break, and we will take a regular break. Feel free surprise to read again. me. But Ron would have been the person to offer to return Nicole's glasses. In the Simpson murder trial, it was a slow and tedious day. You told us you made a reservation prior to coming to court this morning. What we've heard, Dan, is that Rosa Lopez is engaged to be married. We have witnesses coming out of the woodwork who know nothing about the case, claiming to know something just so they can get involved. I don't think they can stand. Did you see the defendant at 945? No. Did you know where he was at 945? No. Did you see the defendant at 950? Now, what is it, Simpson? Did you know Come where on. he was at 950? Mr. Simpson, are you acquainted with the gentleman at the end of counsel table there, Mr. O.J. Simpson? Yes, I am. Have you ever been around when your dad was getting ready to leave for a trip? I just know he did do it. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, just a mother feeling. The killer pulled back Nicole's head with his hand in order to slit her throat. His knuckle appeared to be swollen. There appeared to be a laceration. It can be deceiving, and certainly in his case, although he looked like Tarzan, you know, he was walking more like Tarzan's grandfather. Blood stains in question did not come from preserved blood. Most of today's testimony concerned those bloody stuff. What was found at the scene? I said, yeah, well, how did it get all around the bad thing for the prosecution? There. There. How about that, Mr. Fung? That's a terrible mistake from the point of view of the criminal. I am so confident the jury is going to do the right. The court has found a fun with good cause to excuse jury number Four six other jurors two. have been dismissed. As My toes were stepped on. I probably stepped on a couple other people's toes. But that was just the nature of, you know, being so crowded Ron all the time. And Nicole was butchered. You say on your oath, this is a not a dress. Any black person as a nigger. I wish to talk about black people as niggers. This statement is racist, and he is the racist. This not is me. Not now the Furman trial. Wait. My wife Nicole, who came into my life at what is probably the most difficult time for an athlete at the end of my career, and she turned those years into some of the best years I've had in my life, babe. Eh? There's virtually an ocean of evidence. It doesn't fit. If it we doesn't fit, find the defendant you not must acquit. At the time of murder. I'll never forget him. Best thing I told her is that I love her. I remember when the only choice was aspirin. Next came Tylenol, and now there's a leave. For me, the choice is Advil. Nothing is proven to work better or last longer than Advil. Nothing. Advanced medicine for pain. And then they had to turn around and say, he's an incredible person, but you should accept his evidence as being credible. Okay. But shouldn't we all agree that at least the jury did its job, and it's a job none of us wanted? Absolutely, and yeah, God absolutely. help us. The jury did its when job we don't... defined by Johnny Cochran. Guys, we got to say goodbye. Uh, thanks thank to Robert Glazier in Los Angeles for joining us. Thanks to our studio panel. Offer to any of the jurors that may feel comfortable in that environment. All right, if any of the jurors are watching, or if you know a juror, you can have them contact CNN in Los Angeles. Just ask for the Larry King Live Division. Our 
Almost our entire production staff is out here and will be here all through next week. Maybe longer if necessary, but definitely all through next week. If you'd contact us, we'll get in touch with Joel and we'll try to put that together. Wouldn't that be helpful to oh, I'd, Lois? I'd, I'd love to. I always like to talk to a jury when I've won a case. I don't like to talk to them necessarily when I've lost, but yeah, that'd be... That would be yeah, but a lot of people would learn from watching that jury sit down and exchange thoughts with the consultant who was part of their selection team. When Cochran singled her out, you mentioned today you'd like her for your next case. Yeah. Was she a big difference in this? Oh, sure. I mean, we, we lost 10 jurors, and still the, the 12 remaining ones you know, went our way in, in, in a very short period of time. I mean, that's a tremendous tribute to Joellen's ability to pick a jury. How much of it was racial? Um, I, don't, I don't really think that, that much of it was racial. I mean, we had a, we had a jury that was comprised of eight African Americans, uh, two, uh, two whites, and one Hispanic. And obviously, in a very short period of time, they came to a uh, conclusion that kind of went across all, all racial bounds. So I don't, I don't think that uh, there was the focus on that, perhaps at least in the jury room, um, as, uh, as was out there in the public. Uh, so you, you want it for your next case? We can work sure during do. <laughs> next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. You got a case next Tuesday? I start picking a jury in a death penalty case on Tuesday. You're defending in a death penalty yes. case? Next Tuesday, and you start picking a jury. Are you available next Tuesday? Yeah, I am available, good, Bob. Good, good. Okay, <laughs> right. she is. And jurors, if you're watching, we could set it all up here and make it very comfortable. And Joellen could host it. And that might be fascinating. Uh, fascinating television. The television has become part of this world. You, yours is the complicated end. Do well, you think they wasted a little too much time, prosecution and defense? Well, I certainly think, DNA. I think the prosecution took more time than they needed to. They tried to explain. You don't, you don't know how to, how, to, how to put a car together in order to drive it. So I think they went too far in trying to, to educate the jury on DNA. But it's a very complex topic, and there are things that you just have to cover, and they are boring, and they're difficult to understand. So there are things that you just have to do, and that you know they're going to be boring. You try and spice it up if you can, but you can't always do that. Uh, give me the moment when he stood up, they stood up. You were where? In the first row? Um, I was sitting in the first row behind the attorneys. Uh, I was sitting next to, uh, or standing next to uh, Sean Chapman, uh, Carl Douglas, Howard Harris, and Jerry Ullman. You stood because you're, even though not a lawyer, you're part of the team. Yeah, I tell you, it, you it was a very move. No, I didn't have to stand, but it was a very moving moment because um, having been involved with OJ for this period of time, we all have got to know, uh, have gotten to know him very intimately. And when the attorneys stood up, it was just a natural reaction on my part. And w at least in the back, we all took hands because... It you were holding hands? We, we yeah. were holding hands. We were all holding hands. We said a prayer. Yeah, we all stood around in a circle and held hands and had a prayer. Were you nervous when the judge said, I want the jury to listen carefully when she reads it so that you understand what she's saying? Didn't you start to think then we got a, maybe a second degree in one of these issues? Larry, I was terrified the entire time until I heard that knot. I was terrified. Right, now, why, why was there so much relief after the first knot, since there had to be a second knot? Coming? Well, it made no sense. Once they found him not guilty of one count, it made no sense that they would find him guilty of the other count. Why? Can't you be not guilty of first and guilty of second? Sometimes. When you see a verdict, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it takes time. It's not, that's not something that they would have reached that quickly. It had to be consistent. So. Hi, Salaamu Alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his true servant. And I further bear witness that Minister Louis Farrakhan is his divine reminder in our midst. On behalf of my family, my mother here, my wife at home, and my children. We have been the brunt of a whole lot of attacks. And those of you who know the plight of my father know that whenever any black man is in trouble, he always comes to your aid. Come on. Come on. Never be ashamed to stand up and say that Farrakhan is a friend of the black man. And I want all, and I challenge all of the leaders, that when you are asked by your enemy and those who oppressed us, my father is not a bigot. He's not a racist. He is not an anti-Semite. And we 
have the history in our archive that will prove everything that I'm telling you. Go ahead. So, from the president on down to everybody who's under him, Farrakhan is in your midst today. You don't have to think about what he said or listen to anybody about what he said. Call him yourself and ask him what he said. I present to you the man that God has given this vision to. For without the vision, the people will perish. And I say to you that my father is here to speak to you. So listen to him very carefully. I bring to you my leader, my teacher, my guide, my father, your brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let us receive him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we thank him for his prophets and the scriptures which they brought. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the Gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah. I am so grateful to Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who came among us and raised from among us a divine leader, teacher, and guide, his messenger to us, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear and wonderful brothers, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, As-salamu alaykum. I would like to thank all of those known and unknown persons who worked to make this day of atonement and reconciliation a reality. My thanks and my extreme gratitude to the Reverend Benjamin Chavis and to all of the members of the National Organizing Committees, to all of the local organizing committees, to Dr. Dorothy Height in the National Council of Negro Women, and all of the sisters who were involved in the planning of the Million Man March. Of course, if I named all those persons whom I know helped to make this event a reality, it would take a tremendous amount of time. But suffice it to say that we are grateful to all who made this day possible. We are grateful to those who put up the sound and the screens. We are grateful to all of the technical people 
who have made this possible, to all of the security personnel. My heartfelt thanks to Mr. Robert Johnson, the CEO of BET, for having the Reverend Chavis, Dr. Cornell West, and myself with Bev Smith on our voices to help inform our people of the purpose for the Million Man March and for taking out a full page endorsing the march in the USA Today newspaper. We thank all of the black newspapers, radio stations, commentators, disc jockeys who really talked up the Million Man March. The mass media did not get involved until the last minute, and it seemed as though they got involved with another gen agenda in mind. But to all of you, and we thank you, a mass media too, because even though you planned it for mischief, God planned it for good. So we thank you very much for helping to make this day successful. And to all who participated in the program and who helped to formulate the program, to all the singers, the dancers, the performers, the speakers, to all of the celebrities, to the members of the Congressional Black Caucus, to all of the religious leaders who are present, to all of the state legislators, to everyone that made this day possible, words are inadequate to express our heartfelt thanks, but really in truth, all thanks, all praise, all honor, all glory belongs to God. For this is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> so we are here rejoicing in this day. Certainly to all of the members of the Nation of Islam, to all of the ministers, captains, secretaries, and sister captains, to all of the foot soldiers who worked to raise money that this day could be produced and hopefully all of our vendors be paid. It is not adequate to express our deep sense of personal gratitude so all I can say is thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Now, where are we gathered? We're standing at the steps of the United States Capitol. I'm looking at the Washington Monument and beyond it to the Lincoln Memorial. And beyond that, to the left, to your right, the Jefferson Memorial. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of these United States, and he was the man who allegedly freed us. Abraham Lincoln saw in his day what President Clinton sees in this day. He saw the great divide between black and white. Abraham Lincoln and Bill Clinton see what the Kerner Commission saw 30 years ago when they said that this nation was moving toward two Americas, one black one white, separate, and unequal. And the Kerner Commission revisited their findings 25 years later and saw that America was worse today than it was in the time of Martin Luther King Jr. There's still two Americas, one black, one white, separate, and unequal. Abraham Lincoln
Lincoln, when he saw this great divide, he pondered a solution of separation. Abraham Lincoln said he never was in favor of our being jurors or having equal status with the whites of this nation. Abraham Lincoln said that if there were to be a superior or inferior, he would rather the superior position be assigned to the white race. There in the middle of this mall is the Washington Monument, 555 feet high. But if we put a one in front of that 555 feet, we get 1555, the year that our first fathers landed on the shores of Jamestown, Virginia, as slaves. In the background is the Jefferson and Lincoln Memorial. Each one of these monuments is 19 feet high. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president. Thomas Jefferson, the third president. And 16 and 3 make 19 again. What is so deep? about this number 19. Why are we standing on the Capitol step today? That number 19, when you have a nine, you have a womb that is pregnant. And when you have a one standing by the nine, it means that there's something secret that has to be unfolded. Right here on this mall where we are standing, according to books written on Washington, D.C., slaves used to be brought right here on this mall in chains to be sold up and down the eastern seaboard. Right along this mall, going over to the White House, our fathers were sold into slavery. But George Washington, the first president of the United States, said he feared that before too many years passed over his head, this slave would prove to become a most troublesome species of property. Thomas Jefferson said he trembled for this country when he reflected that God was just and that his justice could not sleep forever. Well, the day that these presidents feared has now come to pass. For on this mall, here we stand in the capital of America. And the layout of this great city, laid out by a black man, Benjamin Banneker, this is all placed and based in a secret Masonic ritual. And at the core of the secret of that ritual is the black man. Not far from here is the White House. And the first president of this land, George Washington, who was a grand master of the Masonic order, laid the foundation, the cornerstone of this Capitol building where we stand. George was a slave owner. George was a slave owner. Now the president spoke today and he wanted to heal the great divide. But I respectfully suggest to the president, you did not dig deep enough at the malady that divides black and white in order to affect a solution to the problem. And so today, we have to deal with the root so that perhaps a healing 
can take place. Now this obelisk at the Washington Monument is Egyptian. And this whole layout is reminiscent of our great historic past, Egypt. And if you look at the original seal of the United States, 